Could the Denver Broncos be putting themselves in a position to make some big moves in 2025 with their salary cap maneuvering? We'll break it all down here on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode, Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country once again for making us your first listen of the day every single day. To all you everydayers out there, you make this show exactly what it is. You can get this podcast for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Do us a favor, hit that subscribe or that follow button if you haven't done so already so you never miss out on what's going on with your favorite team, when you want a reaction and analysis on how this makes the team better, how it maybe makes them worse, Lockdown Broncos is the place to be because we bring the heat every single day, all year long. I'm Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports, joined alongside, as always, by Sarah Bettinger, site expert, predominantlyorange.com. Sarah, the, the question that we had wanted answered for a long time is how are the Broncos going to maneuver Russell Wilson's dead cap? We waited until the new league year became official. There was some processing that took place. And the Broncos taking on the bold move of taking on the largest portion of Russ's dead cap hit here in 2024, which gives them landing room, wiggle room, whatever you want to call it room for 2025, where they're going to have a lot of free agents that are set to hit the market next year. Denver's going to be in a position to make some big moves going forward. So in your opinion, does this necessarily cripple the Broncos the way that we had all thought initially that it could have? Well, it really doesn't, uh, in all honesty. I mean, obviously, you you wouldn't want to have this dead cap hit if you could avoid it. Of course, now with this current dead cap hit of $53 million for this, this coming season, I mean, it puts the Broncos as the highest in the league in terms of dead cap space. So, obviously, the Russell Wilson thing, it's, it's kind of disastrous when you look back on it and the whole situation that was. But as far as kind of making it, uh, making lemonade, let's say, Cody, with, with this whole thing. The Broncos did a good job of that. I think the increase of the salary cap up to $255.4 million, that really set the team up to be able to have every option on the table as far as you and I, I think both, I, I think we can agree, we'd never heard of the option of saying, okay, you're a post-June 1 cut, but we can choose which dead cap we want to take this year. That's just really never come up because this is kind of an unprecedented situation, isn't it? So the Broncos taking on 53 million in dead money here in 2024, it's a higher percentage of the salary cap than it would be, let's say, if they would take the 32 million in 2024 and the 53 million in 2025. That's kind of where you and I had talked about this in the past, like, okay, get the smallest percentage of the salary cap and work it that way. But instead of doing that, the Broncos are trying to free up as much space as they can for 2025, taking the hit, the extra almost, you know, 21 million this year in terms of that dead cap space. So all of that to say, hopefully that's not too much of a word salad for people out there who aren't really <laughs> versed in the salary cap. You and I, Cody, we're not necessarily, mm -mm. you know, we don't work for over the cap or spot track or anything like that by any means. But ultimately what this means is that the Broncos have kind of limited themselves in 2024 in order to free themselves up a lot in 2025. I think there's some bigger questions that we also have to ask here as well, seeing the run on quarterbacks in the free agency market and maybe asking ourselves the question, like, is Denver truly just going to run it with Jarrett Stidham one year, maybe a rookie of the NFL draft? Like, really, how the quarterback market has fallen in free agency suggests that the Broncos aren't making that move in terms of going after a guy who's already in the league. So now we just play the waiting game. Is Denver going to look in the NFL draft for their quarterback of the future, or could they maybe even look into next season? I mean, there are so many things that are on the table right now for Denver, and I think with this financial flexibility, it makes sense to, to maybe to where Denver is at here. Now, to kind of put it in the Cliff Notes version for those who are worried about like the numbers, once again, the Broncos taking on that $53 million here in 2024. Russ's dead cap, $32 million next year. A lot of operating room for them going forward, including – our good friend Mike Kliss kind of putting it out there that Denver next offseason could be pushing up to $100 million in salary cap space. And so, Sarah, for me, I'm wondering, okay, you get that type of money. Do you go out there and do you spend it? But it gives you complete room to maneuver and go take care of things because there are two huge priorities that we already know that the Broncos have to take care of going into next season, one of them being 
Patrick Sertan's contract extension. The second one being Quinn Miner's contract extension as well. We've seen that. We've seen the market for cornerbacks. We've seen the market for offensive guards. Denver's going to need that help there. They are, absolutely. But I think also that $100 million plus in cap space, because we don't know exactly where the salary cap is going to land. It was surprisingly huge jump here in 2024. Could be the same in 2025. These TV deals for teams and for the league is is really been beneficial. So like you mentioned, you've got Sertan, you've got Miners. The Broncos probably believe that those two guys are franchise cornerstones at this point. But I think having that ample cap space, over $100 million, it really frees up the Broncos for a number of different things. Look, they could go to the NFL draft for a quarterback this year, and they could evaluate after a season and say, look, we, we really weren't 100% happy with that. And they could go into the offseason next year saying, we have everything on the table. If there's a free agent out there, and, and I'm not saying that this is going to be the case, but Dak Prescott is a free agent, for example. Let's say Dak Prescott hits the open market somehow. The Broncos would have the flexibility to say, we can go after – anyone that we want because we have the cap space we have the cash in place to be able to do that with the with the ownership group being the richest in american pro sports like we have every opportunity to do whatever we want or you hit on the rookie quarterback right let's say you draft the guy and he ends up being a stud you can go into free agency and say we are going to take the houston texans approach again this year and we're going to sign whoever we want to be able to surround that young quarterback with talent so it, it is going to be tough to swallow the pill that is 2024. But when you look ahead, it, the Broncos have so much flexibility beyond this year. Like it, it's tough to wait. It's just like the new uniform co conversation, isn't it, Cody, where everybody wants them now, but you got to wait for these things to, to unfold. I could see this being a, a, you know, the Broncos not necessarily punting this year, but really evaluating and seeing who's going to be part of this team going forward. And I think maybe something else to keep an eye on here for Denver is that they don't necessarily have to to reach or make moves. How far have we come, Sarah, this offseason from the, the commentary, the idea the Broncos are going to be crippled or in salary cap hell to all of a sudden it's like, wow, you know, they're actually in a pretty good spot and they're going to have a lot of wiggle room going forward. Maybe the Broncos know what they're doing after all here. And, and look, I Trust exercise is going to be taking place here in 2024 in the eyes of Broncos country. A lot at stake here as the Broncos look to get back to winning, but they're going to have to go through what we call this little rebuild here in Broncos country. Another thing that Denver did do in terms of NFL free agency moves is free agency continues. Waves two, waves three coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Denver, they added a linebacker. Is Cody Barton in line to really replace Josie Jewell, or could Denver make some more moves? We'll break that down and much more here on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. Today's Locked on Broncos podcast is brought to you by our friends over there at Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you could still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for three years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Did the Denver Broncos just sign their other starting linebacker next to Alex Singleton after the departure of Josie Jewell? Cody Barton is coming in. And in my opinion, the more Broncos, the more the Broncos can add guys named Cody, the better. So, hey, you know what? We'll see. We'll talk about this signing of Cody Barton for the Denver Broncos and what it means going forward. But we want to thank all of you for making Locked On Broncos your first listen of the day every single day right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, free and available everywhere that you get your podcast. And you can also watch Cody and I 
on YouTube. That's been one of my favorite ways to consume content this NFL offseason. Just throw on YouTube. The algorithm's already set up for you. And the more you watch Lockdown Broncos, heck, even better. Subscribe and turn on the notifications there, and we'll just pop right on up. Every single new thing that the Denver Broncos do, you ain't going to miss out on it because we're going to cover it here on the show. And that includes... I mean, this is at least the second Cody that I know of that's come to the Denver Broncos organization in 2024. So, Cody, I mean, obviously, this is uh, your brother from another here, Cody Barton, <laughs> former third round pick uh, of the Seattle Seahawks and really uh, just became a starter these last two years. He's racked up over 250 total tackles the last two seasons, started for the Washington Commanders last year. This is an interesting signing for the Broncos because we've talked about the team, you know, re-signing Jonas Griffith. And we had an episode where we were like, that's Jonas and Alex Singleton are really the only linebackers on the team. So Barton was necessary, I think, regardless of what it means in terms of his starting status. Yeah, and I think that's the biggest debate right now in the eyes of Broncos country. I, I saw a, some mixed reactions, right? I remember watching Russell Wilson's first game as a Denver Bronco against the Seattle Seahawks in Seattle in that game. And a guy who made probably the game-defining play that really forced the Broncos in that fourth and five situation, Cody Barton, made a play on Javante Williams. And if he didn't make that play, Javante picks up a first down. And all of a sudden, we're at maybe having a different conversation. Maybe the Russell Wilson story doesn't end the way that it does, right? One game maybe could have defined the entire two years here. Unlikely here. But Cody Barton was a guy who stood out in that game in a big way. And... I don't know if you're going to get a guy in Cody. I have to go back and watch some more film there. I mean, I, the Washington Commanders, they had a pretty solid defense at one part of the season. Then it really fell off. Then Jack Del Rio got fired. Barton is a guy that, you know, kind of, you know, does play with his hair on fire. But is he an upgrade over Josie Jewell? I mean, Sarah, at this point, I feel like it's debatable. You know, I think for Josie, you're losing a guy who is very consistent, very steady. I know there's some people that don't like Josie Jewell, but Josie's has been very consistent. And there was a narrative, well, the Broncos are going to get somebody else that doesn't miss tackles. Josie Jewell had four missed tackles in 2023, folks. Like, where do we get these narratives? Oh, they missed tackles. Because we see a running back going for a long distance? I don't know, maybe. But the thing for Barton is, this is a guy who does have starting experience in the National Football League. That's obviously important. And I'm very curious to see how his stature fits in with what Vance Joseph wants to do defensively. Some people said, well, hey, this guy's going to come in. Here's your starter right next to Alex Singleton. I don't think that's the case. And to be honest with you, I don't think that should be the case, even if that was the vision for Cody Barton. In my opinion, you open up a competition at inside linebacker next to Alex Singleton. Alex Singleton's the one penciled in guy there that is going to start. But open it up between him and Jonas Griffith. And if Drew Sanders is going to move back to inside linebacker, let Drew be in the mix there too, because Right now, and I know you put a tweet out there on Twitter, the signing of Barton makes it seem like, why did Denver even draft Drew Sanders in the first place? There are a multitude of ways that we can approach this. I mean, Sarah, I'm curious for your thoughts here on the addition of Barton and maybe what it means to the Broncos roster specifically at inside linebacker. Well, let's talk about how money talks in this situation, right? The deal is one year worth up to $4 million, and we know Jonas Griffith signed for, I believe, Cody, one year around nine hundred fifty k. So when you, when you look at the money aspect of things, of course, that would indicate that Barton is probably the favorite to start. But also, Jonas has been with the team for a handful of years, and he's now gotten re-signed by multiple different coaching staff. So there's certain thing there. I think the biggest advantage that Cody Barton has over Jonas Griffith right now is the fact that He's played the last two years. And that's big. And the difference between Cody Barton to me with Josie Jewell is, is pretty obvious. Josie was an instinctual player who, who has made a living in the NFL multiple. He's been he's, this is his third contract that he signed this offseason. So he's obviously a very valuable NFL player, regardless of what people say or think about him, Cody. And you and I both agree on that as even if he's not Ray Lewis in his prime, right? Or or something like that, or Fred Warner. But <laughs> Josie's been a valuable player. Why? Because he plays so instinctively. He's always been that way at Iowa. He's just always, he's kind of like, uh, you know, the Sherlock Holmes of the defense. He's always two, three steps ahead of everybody. And he's able to overcome a lack of elite physical metrics by playing with his head. And, and Cody Barton, I'm not saying he's not a smart, instinctual player, but this is a guy who ranked, uh, scored a 9.3 on the RAS scale coming out of Utah, Cody. A big reason why he was a top 100 draft choice coming out of Utah is that athleticism that he brings to the table and that shines specifically in coverage and there's been a number of people our, our good friend Robbie out there posting some clips 
I mean, Cody Barton is a good coverage matchup linebacker. I'm not saying he's going to be, you know, getting man up with Travis Kelsey, things like that, but <laughs> he's been good in coverage. And so I think that's, that's the biggest difference here is now you have, you've replaced Josie, who's not the most athletic linebacker, although he can hang, he plays instinctually. He's in the right spot. He's never out of place. He's rarely out of place, I should say. And now you've got a guy like Barton who, like you said, plays with his hair on fire and he combines that with elite athletic metrics. It's going to be fascinating to see how those two, that it's just a difference. It's a complete difference in the, the style of the player that you're getting in terms of their physical and athletic makeup. Well, and I think another thing to look at as well, Denver could add a linebacker in this year's NFL draft. There's Peyton Wilson out of NC State. That's obviously one of the top guys in this year's class. You also look at Trevin Wallace out of Kentucky. Uh, some other names, Cedric Gray out of North Carolina, Edron Cooper out of Texas A&M. You know, athletic traits, I feel like the position inside linebacker these days, look, you look at some of the price tags. Some guys got like Patrick Queen, what he got in Pittsburgh. I mean, a few years ago, I think we saw C.J. Mosley get a mega contract there with the New York Jets. The thing is, with linebackers, you need guys who are athletic and also play the run. But you don't want a guy that's too undersized. To me, it's like, how do you factor this in? I think one guy who's going to be valuable in this department, and look, I think Vance Joseph, I don't know his background as a talent evaluator or anything like that, but I think Jim Leonard is a guy who's very, very good at recognizing guys that can maximize what Denver wants to do defensively, especially from the passing game standpoint. He's a DB's coach, passing game coordinator. His role is going to be pivotal inside of Denver's defense from a schematic standpoint. And so part of me is wondering what type of feedback or insight is he providing here? How is he helping in the scouting and leverage department, maybe the NFL draft or maybe even some free agents? I I'm very curious for the vision. You know, the thing that's frustrating to me, Sarah, all these new guys are signing with the Denver Broncos and we don't get a we don't get introductory press conferences. That's something that's changed when Sean Payton came in. And look, I'm not sitting here trying to complain, but it's like for fans, get to know. Get to know who these guys are a little bit ahead of time. Like, there's questions we obviously would like to ask these players. There's questions we'd like to ask Sean and we'd like to ask George. We'll probably have to ask them at the NFL draft meeting that is coming up here in a few weeks before the draft. But it's like fans are only getting to know these players based on in house team media interviews, which look, I, uh, that's my opinion on that. I mean, I'm not going to go any further, but it's just, it's frustrating because fans want to know who these guys are what they bring to the table. They want to hear from them. And sometimes you're not getting it from a standpoint where you're going to get a question that maybe challenges the status quo a little bit. To me, that's a little frustrating in this process, but we will find out. And this is where we ask you Broncos country. When it comes to the inside linebacker position, what are your thoughts on the Cody Barton signing? Are you happy with this signing? Do you think they should sign somebody else? Or do you think that they should add to the room in the NFL draft? If you're listening or watching lockdown Broncos. Make sure you let us know. Free agency continues, though, and we got to ask ourselves the question, are the Denver Broncos done? We're going to share some insight into what we think they will do here in the next week or two in free agency here on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. Today's Locked on Broncos is brought to you by our friends over there at the Game Time app. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. You shouldn't have to worry if you go to checkout and all of a sudden it pops up saying tickets sold out or that section and row is no longer available sometimes that does happen but game time they do a great job of making sure that you get access to the best seats and the best prices possible with their best price guarantee game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports music comedy and theater events that are going on near you they have killer last minute deals all in prices views from your seat and the best price guarantee game time they take the guesswork out of buying tickets so you and your family can go enjoy your next event. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. You can see all the all-in prices that show you your total up front so you know that you're getting a great deal before you even check out and you can buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. So check it out today. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account and use code LOCKDOWN for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account Redeem code locked on for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. As we continue today's episode, locked on Broncos, are the Broncos done making moves here in NFL free agency? There's a lot of uproar on social media because fans want to see moves happen and they want to see them now. We tell you why that may take some time here. You may not see anything for the next couple of weeks. We'll break it out on here on today's brand new episode. Lockdown Broncos, real quick, wanted to say thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country once again for making us your first listen of the day every single day to all the everydayers out there. 
You make Locked On Broncos exactly what it is. The free agency frenzy was crazy. You helped elevate Locked On Broncos in a big way. Thank you so much for your conversation, your discussion, and your insight here on the show. Sarah, we're at the point now, all the exciting moves in NFL free agency, they've happened. I mean, the legal tampering period, or what we call the legal negotiating period, that was wild last week. The start of the new league year, not as wild, but there were some wild moves that did happen in between. Now it's almost to the point of free agency where it's like, all right, this is where Denver said that they're probably going to be the most active in a sense. But what does that look like? Does that mean like multiple signings? In my opinion, Sarah, I don't think Denver's going to go out there and make too much you know, of noise at this point. I think they're going to make me do a couple of in-house signs. I think guys like Justin Sternot are still available. They have a chance to bring him back. They love him as one of their special teams guys there. But I don't think Denver's going to go out there and make a big-time move in the next two weeks. I think, Cody, I, I could see that, honestly. And as we talked about early in the offseason, you know, George Payton made it clear the Broncos aren't going to be involved in Tier 1 of free agency or Wave 1 of free agency, whatever you want to call it there. And we've seen that come to pass, right? They've they've not only not been involved, but they've gotten rid of some of their most expensive players on the roster. Jerry Judy via trade with the Browns, Justin Simmons, Russell Wilson, and others here. But now I think you get, you've gotten to the point of the offseason where – if there's bargains available or if there's guys that you believe could be fits, you still have to go after targeted players. And I think the Broncos have a number of areas of weakness on this roster that they do need to address via free agency. Still got over 23, 24 million in spending, you know, cap space as far as what the Broncos have right now. I think specifically where I want to see this team add is on the defensive line. I, I think that's almost a non-negotiable for me. As we get closer to the draft, the Broncos just don't have the capital to go into the NFL draft and leave defensive line as an option for one of their first two picks. And maybe, maybe I'm wrong about that, Cody. Maybe we'll see them go after a D lineman in the first round. Cause wasn't Jim Leonard, a, a assistant there at the Illinois, you know, football program that at the college level, and they've got a first round D lineman. I, I'm just saying, I'm just throwing that out there. So maybe I'll have to eat my own words at the NFL draft, but I would go with in this free agent class, I would go to the defensive line and I would say, you know what, is there another guy or two that could upgrade this front? Because we need to protect the linebackers. We need to protect the defensive backs. We need to make sure that these guys are set up in a way to succeed. Because although Malcolm Roach may have been the best run defender in the NFL on a per snap basis last year, the reality is he only played 290 snaps. And so I'm a bit skeptical at this point that you're going into the season, just like last year with you know Jonathan Harris as the third guy. I don't think Malcolm Roach can be the only guy the Broncos add on the D-line. So that's a place that I would love to see them. As you say, if, if the next two weeks are a little dry, if they do go after one spot, that's my pick for right now. I think that's a fair point, too, because you look at it as well. Like, okay, ideally Malcolm in the middle. That's his new nickname. You heard it here, Locked On Broncos. You're going to have Zach Allen, Malcolm in the middle, and then DJ Jones. But you got to understand as well, folks, like Sarah, to the point of the snaps he played, like he was in different packages them last season and he's going to obviously be in different packages here in Denver you're not going to have him play 99% of the snaps because obviously those big guys it's all about personnel it's about matchups and often at times now we're seeing the game transition to some base nickel looks where you're not necessarily going to have those guys consistently you're going to be a little diverse in terms of who you put on the field and you could have a NASCAR package which could make things entirely different and you could live in the NASCAR package in several situations depending on the team that you're looking to play but also on top of that, even if those are your three starters on the defensive line, you need depth behind them. And I think we have questions right now here. Okay, you have Jordan Jackson on the line. Uh, you still on the roster there. Not really an option that's been proven for Denver, right? Matt Henningsen, I think, has been a solid role player. But is there an upgrade at that position? Like, is this a time where Denver has to look at everything and say, you know what? We like what this guy can do for us. But does he give us an advantage when he's on the field? I think everything around Denver right now has to go into the mindset of this is our base chess pieces of who we have here are the pieces behind them as good, if not, you know, give us a better chance than what we had at that position last year from a depth standpoint. And it goes back to what George Payton and Sean Payton said, depth, 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 depth. That's their focus here in free agency. So if they go out there, I agree with you. Defensive line has to be a big one there. You can maybe even look at wide receiver here, adding another guy into the mix as well. You know, I think you brought up as well Hunter Hunter Renfro. Obviously got released by the Las Vegas Raiders there. Josh McDaniels kind of ruined him there. I mean, you wouldn't mind seeing, you know, a little bit of a flyer on a guy like him who's 
kind of value is a little shot right now because of how things ended. I mean, he wasn't even featured prominently inside that Raiders offense, which was a surprise considering he's also been a guy over the course of the last however handful of years that's given the Broncos some problems. So you have a guy that can create some separation, a good route runner, can put him in the slot, great option for you inside the red zone, where Denver obviously has to be better this season. There is that, but then you factor in the $23 million estimated in cap space, how much of that goes to this year's draft class, right? I think there's, what, you want to have a baseline of like 8 to $10 million for that. So and then you have to have flexibility for when the season obviously comes forward. I, I don't know where Denver's at at this standpoint, but I don't expect them to make any big moves here. But I, I think that they could make some moves that give them some depth options. You still have to fill out the 90-man roster. You have to have space here. For obviously the NFL draft, Denver has eight picks right now. They could use some of those picks to trade up. They could trade back and maybe get even more picks. I, I just don't know what direction they're going to go, and everything's very quiet on the front. But you know, it's not a bad thing here for a team that is considered in rebuild mode right now. Right, exactly. And I think you make some great points, Cody. And to your point about the draft class and the cap space that that takes up, that's always a great topic for every offseason because I think it gets misconstrued oftentimes when the, when you have a 90-man roster, the top 51 is all that counts against your salary cap until the season begins, until you have to go to final roster cuts when those have to be turned into the league in September. So the, the great news is, is regardless of, of the size of your draft class, you're typically only allocating throughout the course of the offseason about $3 million of your top 51 to the NFL draft. So the, the Broncos don't necessarily have to say, like you said, eight to 10 million, that the whole draft class will ultimately probably cost that much. But at the same time, for your top 51, it doesn't factor in until that 90 man roster becomes a 53 man roster, at which point then things get reallocated, right? And so that's kind of the nice thing about having these, these slices of the pie available. And I'm also not 100% convinced the Broncos are done trading or getting rid of players. I mean, we just saw Keenan Allen go from the Los Angeles Chargers to the Chicago Bears for a fourth round draft pick. Kind of a mind blowing deal, but I look at doing? that deal. <laughs> I know they're they're getting rid of all their guys. Maybe they're going to take a wide receiver at number five and go back to back years with first round receiver, but that doesn't really feel like Jim Harbaugh's brand, does it? So mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess we'll see. But I see Keenan Allen and I see a guy who's going to be 32 this season. His base salary is over $18 million. And yes, He's going to be nice to have for a young quarterback like Caleb Williams. But then I see Cortland Sutton's deal and I'm like, well, he's 28. He's got two years left on his deal. He's got a base salary of 13 million. If teams like the Jets and Texans apparently missed out on Keenan Allen for a fourth round pick, what might they be willing to offer the Broncos for a guy who's younger, who's cheaper, who has more team control and who had a great, maybe the best year of his career last season. So I'm not 100% sold. The Broncos are done moving guys like that. And I guess we'll have to we'll have to just see. I mean, maybe that's like we've talked about a during the draft kind of move. But there's also a two million trigger as of the day that we're recording this, Cody. It's two days away on Monday. So if you're listening to this or watching this on Monday, there's a two million dollar trigger in Cortland Sutton's salary that becomes fully guaranteed. That would be that that'd be something to watch there. So I think the the Broncos are still in need of making some additions, making some moves to this team, especially if you're going young at the quarterback position. We want to hear from you, Broncos country. What do you anticipate with this team as free agency continues to drag out in the next couple of weeks? Here's the team now maybe shifts their focus to the NFL draft. Let us know your thoughts on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, wherever you get your podcasts or available on YouTube every single day. We have you covered. And when there's breaking news, guess what? There's a brand new episode for you that comes out, bonus episodes. It's a fun time here because for the true fan, you know what we always say. There's never an offseason. But that'll wrap up today's episode. Lockdown Broncos here. Thank you so much once again, Broncos country. We will catch you tomorrow for a brand new episode of the show.